Hello everyone. Hope that you all are doing good. So I'm back with another awaited video. So I was getting some queries regarding how to deploy Spring Boot web application with MySQL database on Google Cloud Platform, that is GCP. So we'll discuss that in today's video. But before jumping into the video's context, I would like to request you that if you gain some knowledge out of my videos, do like, share, comment on the video. And if new to the channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon. So uh, let's go to the ID and you can see that the code part is already done. I've already made a project uh, which is a simple project wherein we uh, I've exposed few of the APIs where we are hitting the database MySQL database and getting some data out of it right so it's a simple code uh, there are various packages one is for the main class and the other one is our controller so our rest controller works in like uh, this is one API where I am testing the uh, endpoints that okay the endpoints are working well or not right then i have a api to post data into the database right here i am working on product entity wherein i have name and id uh, name price things are there in the entity that i'll be saving into the database and uh, i have a get call as well to get all the data from the database so this is just a, a basic example of rest apis that we'll be deploying on google cloud platform Right, so you can see that we have the entity, product entity and the product DTO. DTO is used for getting the object from uh, the REST call and then saving that object uh, by converting that object to the uh, entity, product entity we will be saving into the database. And then we have a product repository that is extending JPA repository. So this is a very simple code. I won't be going in depth of the REST API development. Uh, not much of coding would be there in this um, particular video because look uh, if you want to get some in-depth knowledge on REST APIs I've already made a separate video on REST APIs I'll put the link in the description and also on the i button you can go and watch that so uh, this was the code part this was a simple code part we'll get to the uh, we'll understand the configurations that how we have to configure uh, MySQL database of the Google Cloud platform in our application and then we have to deploy that application right so now let's go to the browser and let's go to uh, so when you google uh, GCP you will be landed on this page that you can see on your screen you just have to log in here and then you will be redirected to this page where you can click on go console and you will be sent to a dashboard kind of a screen right that i'll show you further some of the prerequisites are that you should have a google sdk already installed on your server and a payments account should be there right there should be a account that has been registered with the payments uh, gateway for google right and you have to enable that payment account then only you can work on uh, any of the applications right uh, if you go back to my previous video where we deployed a hello world application to gcp there also i told that there are pre few prerequisites that we have to have a payments account on google and then also we have to have a sdk already installed on our systems right so sdk is already installed on my system and this account that i'm uh, working on is already uh, has a payments account right so you can see that 300 worth of free credits have been already there in my account so i'll be using those to uh, work further right so when you click on go console it will redirect you to this welcome page then you can uh, simply go to this uh, hamburger and then you can click on if you scroll down you will have an option of sql so if you click on sql so you will be redirected to a page where you will be asked to make a instance right so this this is how we'll be starting up how we'll be uh, configuring the mysql for our application one thing that i want to highlight here is that there are various versions of mysql here uh, i'll be using 5.7 version and that 5.7 version is compatible with spring version 3 plus and spring version 3 plus is compatible with java 17 right so i'll be using java 17 in this project and the spring version would be above 3 and mysql version would be 5.7 so uh, you will be landed on this page after you complete your payments and everything and then you will go to this hamburger and you select the sql part when you click on that sql part you will be asked to create an instance 
with free credits so if you click on this insta create instance with free credits you will have options to choose from right you can choose from mysql postgresql sql server so we will be working on mysql so let me click on mysql open to create an instance right so here you have to make a instance a unique name should be provided for an instance and everything should be in a lower lower case right so let me say my b test my db testing right so this is my instance now you have to ha have a password so this is like a root user's password so you can define any password i'll be defining a root only right so the root user should have a root password only and then i have to choose a version of mysql so i'll choose 5.7 as i said that 5.7 is compatible with java 17 so you should work on java 17 to do that too right so you have to choose the database version that is mysql version and then nothing you have to choose just go on the location part and select the location that is very much near to you right so very much near to you could be uh, i'll select the mumbai one right and let me select the mumbai one south asia one right so so it's a single zone we don't need a multi zone right so we have done the configuration simply click on create instance so it will take a little bit of time uh, creating an instance right so once your instance has been created it will take five six minutes to create and uh, this is how your overview page look like so if you scroll a little bit down you will have an option to open a cloud shell right so if you click on this open a cloud shell it will open a shell window right there you have to uh, run queries and uh, actually uh, create your database so like you can see that now uh, my shell has been opened now a basic uh, uh, the starting command has been given that is gcloud sql connect my db testing that's my instance name and the user equals to root right so if you uh, you can simply enter it right so it will take few minutes uh, five six minutes to connect to your uh, local incoming ip right you can see that allowing your ip for incoming connection for five minutes working on it right so you have to wait for five minutes and then thereafter it will ask you for the root user's password if you remember when we were creating an instance uh, we have already input the uh, root user's password as root so you will enter the root password again and then your um, uh, sql has been connected then you can simply run queries and create database and use that database to run uh, different queries from your application right so now it is asking me for the password let me put root so you have to run queries here so you can simply say create create database uh, product right products and then semicolon so you can see the query has run successfully and the database being created so we can simply say use database products now the default would be products sorry uh, i should not use database i should simply say use right so yes so the database has been changed now the default database has been set so uh, this is how you can run your shell queries and create database so if you go on this tab of database there also there is an option to create database if you don't want to create it from the shell so now you can see that i ran a query to create a database products and it has been created here it has been showing here and with the type as user right there are some system tables system databases and product is the user database right so now uh, this is how you can configure your gcp uh, for connecting to your spring boot application right so now what do you have to do you have to simply copy this uh, database name now let's go back to the code part and first let me take you to the uh, application.properties where we have to configure it and then we'll go to pom.xml so here uh, how you have to configure basically if you see that there is just a change of uh, data so uh, url database url and the user would be root password would be root and then or uh, we have hibernate ddl auto update uh, property and then we have the dialect right so uh, these are the properties that we require and this is how you configure the JD, uh, database uh, url for uh, connecting to the uh, gcp database right so uh, this is our database name that is product 
and then you can see that this is cloud instance if you see this value sonic pass key this asia this and my testing db so this is the value coming from if you click on overview i'll have to change that value first so if you click on overview and if you go down a little bit so you can see this connection name so this is the uh, cloud sql instance that we are passing here right so i will have to change this instance let me change this instance right so and then the socket factory socket factory is the mysql socket factory we have to pass right google mysql socket factory so this is uh, required for connecting your uh, my uh, google gcp's mysql to your application right so these were the configurations now there is a requirement that if you are connecting with the gcp's mysql then first thing that you need a mysql connected dependency the second thing is that you also need a socket factory dependency for mysql so if we go to our pom.xml if we uh, scroll a little bit down and let's go to the pom.xml so you can see that there is uh, we are using java 17 as i mentioned and then the version of spring is 3.1.2 right and if you scroll a little bit down i have the mysql connected dependency and also i have the mysql socket factory dependency right so this is required as per the version you are using for mysql so this is required to add when you want to connect to the uh, gcp's mysql dependency right so this is a required dependency that you should add right if you are not adding this you will get some errors while uh, deploying your application so these were the changes in the code part and uh, these were the changes for the configuration part right so we are done with it let's let's just simply go to the project and let's compile the jar file so let me simply go here and simply go on uh, maven build so i have already uh, default command given to maven build is clean install minus dskip test so you can uh, if you are clicking on clicking for the first time on maven build it will ask you to write the command i'll put that command in the description it is clean install minus d skip test i have already uh, ran various times so i'll just simply click on it and it will start uh, running the command so the compilation has started so it will create a jar file when the compilation has been done and we have to deploy deploy that jar file to uh, gcp right so it will take a little bit of time to compile so yes uh, it is compiled now let's go to the directory of the project so if you go in the directory of the project you can see that uh, our jar file is being created so we already have our jar file created now so what you have to do as i said that uh, we have to first connect to the sdk right and in the sdk you have to log in with your user and then choose a project on which you have to deploy this application so that part is already done that part i have already done beforehand so if you want to get an idea of that i'll put the link of my previous videos uh, in description you can go and watch that now as our jar file is already being created let's go to the target folder and let's open a cmd command line and what we have to type here is we have to simply type g cloud i'll uh, give all these commands in description so you simply have to type g cloud app deploy and you have to copy the complete jar name right complete jar name and simply paste it here and put an enter so when you do, uh, run this command it will again ask you options that okay you are deploying this uh, particular jar on this particular project sonic passkey 39502 and these are the zones and these uh, these this is the jar file and this would be the default url that you will be using for your application when it is deployed so if you have any problem if you want to edit it if you want to continue it or uh, sorry don't want to continue it you can pass n or if you want to continue it you can pass y that is yes so i want to continue it i will say y so now it will take a little bit of time to deploy the application so uh, wait for a few minutes if you're doing for the first time it will take a little bit more time if you're doing it for uh, so now our application has been deployed right so application has been deployed on this particular url you can copy this url right so uh, if you go to the code uh, and go to the controller part i said that i have made a testing uh, api that is slash welcome which will tell that our application is deployed successfully or not so let's go to the browser first and hit this uh, api 
So let's say welcome. So it is just deployed. So it might take a little bit of time to uh, show the result. So you have to wait a little bit. So yes, our application is successfully deployed. It says your rest point and uh, your rest endpoint works, right? So this is coming from here. Your rest endpoint works, right? So now our application is ready. Now what we have to do, we have to use this save API to save product data. So let's go to the postman and let's hit the post API. So let me go to the post API. So this is my post API that is save and let's go to the body. So in the body, we have name and price, right? So uh, I've entered, let me enter a chair and the price is 1100, right? So let me enter this data to save this data to the database. So let me save it. So you can see that our response is also there that the ID one chair and the price is this item was saved successfully and the status code is 100. So let me add another data that is table and uh, let me input this as well. So you can see that ID is two, name is table and price is 1100 item saved successfully. So if you go to the uh, console of this, uh, the overview page, and if you again go to the open shell command and open the shell command. So now it should work. Select our from product, right? So you can see that when I ran the select star command, it says that first entry is of chair that is 1100 second entry is of table that is 1100, right? So two rows are being inserted. Now, if we go on the get command, get uh, query, uh, get API, and it is get items. If you go to the code part and see the rest endpoint of getting the data. So it is get items, right? So get items. So you can simply run this uh, endpoint and you'll get the list of data that has been already in the database. So yes, you can see that first entry is of chair, second entry is of table, right? So uh, this is how you can work with uh, GCP and uh, deploying your application on GCP with MySQL, right? So this was it from this video. Hope that you people like, share, comment on the video and please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon if not done yet. So hope to see you in the next video. Till then, happy learning.